If you have trouble properly identifying common species of tortoise, then this is the video for you. In this one, we're gonna go over the five most common species of Mediterranean tortoise, which most of us have become very familiar with over many, many years. However, they still puzzle us when it comes to telling them apart from each other. Let's get right into it. But first, full disclosure, there is an exception to every rule here, and that's because variation is paramount when it comes to nature and wild animals. So while you will be able to rely on this video to safely tell these animals apart, keep in mind, we are dealing with subspecies, locale variants, and extreme variation even within given populations. We're gonna do videos on that stuff later on, but for right now, here's how you tell the five Mediterranean tortoises from each other. All right, first up is the Eastern Hermans tortoise. The Eastern Hermans tortoise is found throughout Eastern Europe, but primarily occurs in the Balkans region. Eastern Hermans tortoises have a scientific name of Testudo hermani bulgari. When it comes to their morphology, they are typically fully grown at between six and eight inches respectively. The shell is a little bit oval, sometimes rounded, and the males typically flare out at the back end, and they are colored a ground color of olive to straw, or sometimes a bright yellow. Each carapace scoot is outlined by some degree of black. When you view the plastron of the Herman's tortoise, it is also basically the same ground color with a degree of striping on either side of the midline. Some of them have solid black banding while others are completely broken up. The tail is a main feature of the Herman's tortoise that helps separate it from some other Mediterranean species we're covering in this video in that they have a hardened tip at the very end. This is present in both males and females. Overall, the Eastern Hermit's tortoise is an extremely hardy species from the Mediterranean, and they are today still one of the most popular tortoises encountered in the pet trade across the globe. Another Mediterranean species is the one that is mostly confused with the Eastern Hermit's tortoise, and that is the Greek tortoise. In this case, the Ibera Greek, also known as the Asia Minor tortoise, Testudo Graeca Ibera. Now, Greek tortoises have an incredibly expansive range throughout Europe and even into parts of Asia, and, but this animal right here, Testudo Graeca Ibera, is the only one of the Greek tortoise family that actually does occur in Greece. Greek tortoises typically have a more domed carapace or a rounder look. The males can flare out just like they do in Herman's tortoises, but when it comes to the Ibra, they have two main distinct looks. They can be that straw color with black markings like a Herman's tortoise, or they can be primarily dark colored like this individual right here. When you look at the plastron of the Greek tortoise, it again basically mimics the carapace. It can be fully dark or it can have areas of light and dark. However, it really lacks any distinct markings in the form of bands like you see on the Hermit's tortoise. One major difference, the plastron of the Greek tortoise has a rear hinge. This does not allow the animal to fully close up like a box turtle, but it does allow it to expand. And this is especially helpful in females when it comes time for them to lay the large eggs that they lay. When you look at the tail of the Greek tortoise, you'll notice that it has a blunt end and lacks the horned tip at the end like you see in the Herman's tortoise. Now, quite possibly the most well-known trait of the Greek tortoise is where it gets its second common name, which is Mediterranean Spurthide tortoise. Why is that? Well, when you look at the thigh on either side of the tail, you will notice at least one raised scoot. Those are tubercles, also known as thigh spurs, and that's where that second name comes from. You typically will not see that in any of the other Mediterranean species. The Ibera Greek tortoise, or Asia Minor tortoise, is fully grown at between 6 and 10 inches respectively, and just like the Hermans, they are a very well-known, common species in herpetoculture and throughout certain parts of their natural range. Okay, next up is the largest Mediterranean tortoise, which is the Marginated tortoise. Marginated tortoises also have an extensive range throughout Europe, but they are found in other places such as the island of Sardinia in Italy, where the Eastern Hermans and the Ivory Greek tortoise do not occur. However, in places like Greece, all three of those species can be found together. The marginated tortoise is fully grown at between 10 and 14 inches, but larger examples do exist. One of the most notable traits about this fantastic animal is its overall appearance when it comes to just looking at the shell. They are elongate and extremely flared out at the back, which is where the name marginated tortoise Testudo marginata comes from. The ground color of the carapace is actually black, while the center of it has a cream or even orange blotch. 
When we look at the plastron of the marginated tortoise, this is where it makes identification of the species a little bit easier because you'll notice right away distinct markings. These are chevrons, triangular dark markings on an otherwise light colored backdrop. This is one of only two Mediterranean tortoises that has this interesting trait. You will not see this on Hermans, you will not see this on Greek, and you will not see this on another species I'm going to show you. They also have, like the Greek tortoises, the rear plastral hinge that allows them to move just a little bit. Okay, so moving on from the largest Mediterranean species to the smallest, which is also the Northern Hemisphere's smallest tortoise species. This is the diminutive Egyptian tortoise. Egyptian tortoises only occur in two areas, which is Egypt and Libya, but they are believed to be mostly extirpated from Egypt, meaning they are, well, basically extinct. Egyptian tortoises are fully grown at only three and a half to four and a half inches, respectively, and they have a very interesting appearance to them. Now, right off the bat, I want you to know something about this individual you'll notice that her carapace top shell is very lumpy or pyramided. That's because she was grown improperly before we received her. These tortoises will be just as smooth as the other individuals we've been showing you in the wild or when raised properly. Nonetheless, she does exhibit all the other characteristics associated with Egyptian tortoises. The carapace is very highly domed compared to many other Mediterranean tortoise species. Scientifically known as Testudo Kleinmani, the Egyptian tortoise has a coloration that allows it to perfectly fit in with its environment. It is primarily sand, beige, or a yellowish coloration with very little dark marking at all anywhere on the carapace. And actually, the supercaudal shield at the back comes to a point. These animals actually live on straight sand for the most part. They live in coastal areas and will actually inhabit dunes. So this light coloration is twofold. It allows them to blend in with that sandy environment, but it also allows them to live in harsh, harsh sunlight. If these animals had any darker coloration to them, they would simply fry under the relentless sun. When we look at the plastron of the Egyptian tortoise, you'll notice something a little bit similar. And that is the fact that it, like the marginated tortoise, has those dark triangular markings, also known as chevrons. Sadly, Egyptian tortoises are critically endangered with much of their wild populations being completely destroyed or on their way to being destroyed. Despite that wild status, they are bred widely across the world in responsible captive situations. Going by several common names, including Horsefields tortoise and Russian tortoise, Testudo horsefieldi is quite possibly the most common out of all of the Mediterranean tortoises. Russian tortoises occur naturally in southeastern Russia, Iran, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and China, and they are extremely hardy tortoises that are probably subject to the most harsh environments out of all of the tortoises we're going over in this video. Russian tortoises have a much rounder carapace than any of the other species we have gone over in this video, but they still have that typical Mediterranean look when it comes to the genus Testudo. They have a light ground color to the carapace of either straw, olive, or sometimes bright yellow, and then they have black blotching on the center of each scoot and even some barring or flecking depending on the population. When we look at the plastron of the Russian tortoise, sometimes it is entirely black or sometimes it has very large blotches. It can be distinguished from the other tortoises, but again, I have to stress that we're kind of looking at very similar structure, markings, and color across the board here. When it comes to the tail of the Russian tortoise, this is where it can be easily confused with Herman's tortoise because it also exhibits that horned tip at the very end on both genders. Okay, let's get into some quick comparisons here to try to make things a little bit easier for you guys. Now, we've got the Russian tortoise, the Greek tortoise in the middle, and the Eastern Hermans tortoise here to the right. Now, looking at these, it's probably pretty easy to see the difference, but my point is it's not always the case. Sometimes these animals are so similar that if you're not holding them in your hands and seeing all the different aspects of them, you may not know what you're looking at truthfully, and that can even go for a trained eye. I've been working with these animals my entire life, so it's very easy for me now, but let me tell you, there was a time when it was not. Right off the bat, we have really good indicators here of size when these animals are fully grown. All three of these are fully mature adult males. The Russian tortoise is the smallest, the Ibera Greek tortoise here is the largest, and the Hermans tortoise is somewhere in the middle. When you look at the carapace markings, you can see we're dealing with lights and darks, but typically the Ibera Greek tortoise is going to be the darkest of them all. The Eastern Hermans tortoise is going to have the most contrast, and the Russian tortoise is going to be the blotchiest looking one. You'll also notice the different degree in the arcing of the shell, with the Russian tortoise by far being the flattest of the three. 
It is worth bringing up the structure of the head in the three of them, even though they are very similar in color and of course shape. But the Greek tortoise typically has the bluntest snout with the eyes sitting a little bit higher in the head. The Russian tortoise will have a little bit more of a pointed snake-like face, whereas the Eastern Hermit's tortoise, again, kind of in the middle there. When we look at the plastron of these three tortoises, really the only two differences are the fact that the Greek tortoise is going to have the hinge that allows them to move the plastron just a little bit, whereas the Hermans and Russian have a completely fixed plastron. And you will also notice that out of the three, it is really the Eastern Hermans that has only any kind of definition to the markings. They can be diffused, of course, but Hermans tortoises are known for some degree of banding on the plastron, whereas the Greek and Russian are not. As one of the world's most popular tortoise species, Mediterranean tortoises are really not all that easy to tell apart if you don't know what you're looking at. But hey, that's what we're here for. We're here to try to show you guys the truth behind all of these animals. And let me tell you, it can get tricky. Take the babies, for example. Now, don't freak out. All four of these right here are Eastern Hermans tortoise, so that's why they look so similar. But in fact, all Mediterranean tortoise babies are pretty darn similar. If you'd like to see us do a video about that and how to tell the babies apart, let us know in the comments, as well any other ideas of what you would like to see us cover here at Garden State Tortoise.